We are back for a second segment where we are going to talk about Dad's journey into the bauxite industry. <laughs> Growing up, our delight was on a Saturday, say, okay, he has to run and check on a project. Mm -hmm. And we would get to go. Mm -hmm. Then you'd get to see a Euclid where, you know, as a kid, it was just humongous. You could stand in the rim yeah. of the tire. <laughs> I remember the first time a big saying. front end loader, I got to stare. Mm. The guy who was operated it put me on his lap and I held the wheel. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't do much because this thing was humongous, but as a child, that, that's the biggest joy, right. to actually take part. And that's one thing that always shared his journey, mm. the projects. And through his story, you learn that thing about conviction. You learn that thing about doing it right the first time and doing it <clears throat> better than good enough. Right. He never settled for good enough. He wanted it always a step above that. And that's something that I, I take with me today. All right. What about you, Nepal? What about what are your early recollections of Alphard? <laughs> My gosh. So many different um, experiences with Alphard from mm -hmm. going near uh, the bauxite, uh, the mud lake, mm -hmm. to get Christmas trees. <laughs> We went to the offices when uh, before we had phone calls up phone phone lines up here to mm -hmm. make um, to call my brothers when we were abroad, and um, the tours that were mm -hmm. those were my favorite the drive throughs. Um, you know, the, all part is always littered with heavy machinery. Yeah. And if 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 you are not a miller's son, you have some level of appreciation for these things. And my obsession were the cranes. Mm -hmm. To this day love them i'll stop on the side of a highway just to look at them wow. love them uh, and he did this thing once i'll tell you this one story mm -hmm. he came i wanted um i just wanted a picture some pictures of it and my dad photocopied a whole manual of these cranes the, the operator's manual mm -hmm. he copied <laughs> all of the whole pages and gave them to me i didn't know what to do with them mm -hmm. but then as i got older i started what i I started to understand it more. I started to appreciate what he did. Mm -hmm. Pages upon pages of being, upon pages of these things. Right. So we, we're talking about the cranes and the, the, the trucks. Tell us about his road building, the road that we enjoy driving on, the Alpart Road. Oh yeah. So yeah. the so the Alpart Road, he um he wasn't a contractor, but he was a designer. Mm -hmm. So he he figured out where the corners would be mm -hmm. he figured out elevation mm -hmm. all of that all of that all the way from gutter all the way down to gutters right he worked he worked on gutters as well mm -hmm. they doing the surveying and everything for for that so every time i'm on here i remember him yeah one of the things <laughs> that you know he stressed when building roads mm -hmm. he said if there's water on the road it's going to deteriorate faster okay so his plans were always detailed what to do with the water how to channel channel the water away from the road mm -hmm. under the road mm -hmm. how to you know put in culverts mm -hmm. culverts mm -hmm. which you know take the water from one side of the road to the other i remember you know a, a story about a design designing this particular road where the only way to get rid of the water was a culvert and he had i guess a senior uh, observer with him mm -hmm. who insisted that there was no way to do that mm -hmm. and it was impossible mm -hmm. and the road did not look like it had that and the only thing he did was he politely walked to one side of the road to show the start of the culvert mm -hmm. walked to the other side show the exit of the culvert mm -hmm. and he didn't say anything mm -hmm. he was humbly confident in his ability and that's something that we heard over the past week 
you know, being said about it. Right. I also heard a story about the road that turns into Alpart itself and mm -hmm. and what they said about the trucks weren't able to maneuver, maneuver the corners. You want to mm -hmm. talk about that one? Sure, sure. You know, yeah. the design of the road had to accommodate large vehicles, tractor trailers. You know, Alpart was notorious for bringing heavy equipment, mm -hmm. boilers. We're talking 20, 30 feet <laughs> long and probably 15 to 20, if not more, wide. And mm -hmm. these vehicles would come down Spur Tree Hill. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell two stories in one. Mm -hmm. I recall one of the equipment had to come from down Spur Tree Hill. Mm -hmm. And he named out two of the largest excavators they had, mm -hmm. tagged on to the back of this piece of equipment to slow it down going down the hill. Wow. It was like the brakes. So that's the type of equipment that you know, or materials that they were moving. Mm -hmm. So the design that he did was to accommodate these large equipment coming in and making the turn into Alpine. Mm -hmm. But there were some naysayers that said, you know, he did not create sufficient room and that they would run over the side of the road and mm -hmm. probably not make it. Mm -hmm. So once the road was open and the first oversized unit that came in there, came in without a breeze, no hassle. The guys turned in, delivered their equipment. To the chagrin of most, but here, here's the key piece of the story. Mm -hmm. My father never said, I told you so, mm -hmm. or you see, I got it right. Mm -hmm. He just mm -hmm. let his work show for himself. Wow. wow. That's, that's commendable because a lot of people would use that opportunity to say, you know, hey, I did that and see what I mean, but not that in his own unique and humble way he he knew what he was he knew what he stood for mm -hmm. and from what i heard he did a lot of reading and he followed the plans yes that's what i heard too. yes he never deviated from the plans and you said something about <laughs> that getting it right the first time or doing it right the first time mm -hmm. and that that meant doing a lot of research mm -hmm. following the process mm -hmm. and not deviating from the process nepal you have anything that you want to add to that well that says that says a lot mm -hmm. right there um he's an engineer mm -hmm. right so engineers they they design and they design and then they design. Mm -hmm. When they're done designing, they design a little bit more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, doesn't it doesn't stop. Even right. at the blueprint, I've seen them make changes right. on the blueprint itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's always a process. And um, his time at Alpart, I feel like, uh, you know, really tapped into that aspect of his intellect and pieces of him that he most, um, that he really developed over time. Mm -hmm. And he did it. You know, there are tons of stories with him out there. Mm -hmm. Him and Mod Lake, him designing a dam, him doing. There's so many stories of him doing all it. But I think all of the stories tell the same message mm -hmm. that you know this was a man that had a lot of responsibilities. That always got the job done. Mm -hmm. Was always respectful, and he followed the plan. He followed the plan, yes. eh? which is the best thing to do, right? Always follow the plan, whether it's the plan you're drawing or the plan that is laid out for you to follow, right? A little white out here and it's okay. Yeah, yeah. But the, the you know, plan, follow the, the plan, plan. Follow the plan. One of the things I admire about that mm. is that he would do these intricate drawings and plans mm -hmm. and he was heavily invested in it. But once everything started to roll out, if he saw a way to improve upon his design, mm -hmm. he would do it. He was never so committed to a plan that mm. he couldn't adjust to, 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 I guess, accommodate what's going on, mm. the realities of life. Mm. Because we can plan for everything, right. but then something pops up. The How detours. We yeah, the detours. Mm -hmm. How do we react to those detours? Mm -hmm. That would embrace those de detours mm -hmm. and make changes. Right. On the fly. Just plan. Yes. So he did a lot of pivoting. At times he pivoted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. And, and that's a, a mark too of a mm -hmm. person who knows that there's no plan that you have to say, okay, this is it. We're not deviating from it. Something like COVID hitting. He would say, okay, 
it's time to pivot, right? Mm -hmm. It's time to find a way around it. Mm -hmm. It's time to find a way over it mm -hmm. or under it, but we're going to make it work mm -hmm. regardless of what. Dad spent more time adjusting than commenting. Mm -hmm. and I, and I think you want to elaborate that's... on that a little bit yes. more, Greg? Right? So if, if he gets thrown a curveball, mm -hmm. he would waste little time on who threw the curve, right. where it came from, and act on the fact that there was a new variable to consider. Mm -hmm. And then he would go after it. And his preparation mm -hmm. in most things that he did enabled him to adjust on the fly. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. good. That's good stuff. <clears throat> Nepal, anything you want to add on, on that? Um, well, what can I say? Mm. You know, what can I say? He, um, the way he approached his work, like you're saying, is so is the approach of somebody that truly cares about what you're doing yeah. right when he's building a plan and i know because we've done it we've done exactly what rick said we've mm -hmm. gone through a design and had to redo it because of one small thing mm -hmm. that doesn't stop it mm -hmm. but he just didn't want it that way anymore because he felt like you know the customers or his client would would get more if we did it a different way mm -hmm. we have redesigned all aspects of, mm -hmm. of of from floor plans, mm -hmm. roofs, mm -hmm. tanks. Mm -hmm. We've done it because he wanted it a certain way. And I'll tell you, more than a few times, I didn't understand why we needed to do it. <laughs> more than a few times. In fact, I remember one house down mm -hmm. by Billy's Bay. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until the house was built, and it was she walked me on that I could see why he, he it was that particular case mm -hmm. was where the house was facing mm -hmm. and it had to do with just how where the house the front of the house was facing right. and he angled it at a point where when you saw the house built mm -hmm. it just fits it just fit because it was looking over the water it just fit it just fit yeah but you couldn't see it at the mm -hmm. time no i couldn't see it at the time mm -hmm. because i thought that the house was facing the whole, a little bit more i believe to this side so mm -hmm. was, i thought okay looking at the horizon it's beautiful but the view was, it was um, taking away from the bigger view wow. that was out front. Wow. You saw the horizon and I thought, you know, the horizon is great. Let's right. see the horizon. Right. Everybody right. wants to see the horizon. Right. Let's do that. Yeah. No, no he, had, um, he had other ideas. And I don't know what made him change it, but he changed it. Mm. And uh, when he did, we had to look at the elevation, whether it was on a hill. We had to do a couple of different things. It wasn't too difficult, that particular case, mm. but he changed it. Right. And after the house was built, I went out there with him and we just went to see the client. Mm -hmm. We always do. And mm -hmm. it looked a hundred times better. Wow. I saw the horizon and I saw the bigger view. Wow. And it was clear that wow. this direction was better. Simple things like that. Simple things like that. Simple, simple things that make a big, big difference. Big difference. Mm -hmm. You know, you, mm -hmm. you touched on something, Nicole, about foundation. And Billy's Bay being right on the beach. Um, bring to mind another design he did along the same south coast there and it was a beach house very close to the water line in sand mm -hmm. and his design called for pylons and then a slab that connected all the pylons which most people who saw the design said oh that's an overkill you know you shouldn't do that mm -hmm. well lo and behold a number of years later a storm came by and washed out all the sand while the houses around it were broken mm -hmm. and, and, and torn apart mm -hmm. this house literally the foundation kept it solid and it was tipped the house was still intact wow. the other houses the the footing caved out and the houses twist and broke apart mm -hmm. that house stayed steady and again, the foundation is the key the to key. every single thing in life, in architecture, in engineering, the foundation is everything. In, in life itself, in life. the foundation that you get and you guys, you got a solid foundation based on everything you have discussed about your father. You got a solid foundation about pursuing your passion, going after things, just making up your mind and just doing it. I think Nike got the, the ad work from him, just do it, I think. Yeah, and, <laughs> and getting it right the first time, Greg, that you insisted on, that he was so passionate about getting it right the first time. And the foundation in life that you guys have been given, you know, it's it's good for you to just keep building on it. 
keep building on it. Take what you have learned and just keep building so that when your time comes and somebody else is doing this, that they can say, you know, Naughty Miller's two boys that Ingrid interviewed years ago, you know, they built on, on what their dad left. They, they built on the foundation that their dad left. And we just want to end this segment right now to just remind people that no matter what we go through in life, that the foundation that we laid, mm -hmm. that will keep us during the storms in life, when, when we're rocked to and fro, when death comes at us as it did recently with dad, that we know the foundation we have been given, the solid mm -hmm. foundation that we have been planted on, will stand regardless of what comes our way. Mm -hmm. So until we come back and talk about that foundation that dad stood for, that foundation he had in God, that one, we are going to just say, do the LCSS. If you like what you're hearing, so you're going to like, right. comment, oh, subscribe, and, and share. share. All right. <laughs>